Okay, we can call this meeting to order, uh, select board meeting for August 28th, 2019. Just give me one second to uh, get this loaded. Here, I'll look at Molly's computer while mine's loading. So uh, we have our consent agenda. We have minutes to approve from May 8th, 2019. Warrants AP2006, AP2005. AP 2007, AP 2006S, WP 1954-2, WP 1955-2, WP 1956, WP 1957, PR 2004, and AP 2008. We have a bunch of one-day liquor licenses for UMass, top of the campus, football season games. Uh, we have one for September 7th, one for September 21st, 2019, one for September 28th, 2019, one for October 26th, 2019, one for November 2nd of 2019, and one for November 23rd of 2019. We have a veteran service intermunicipal agreement, city of Northampton and the town of Hadley yearly agreement. We have a Hadley police department lieutenant MOU, which we are gonna hold on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Hadley police department appointment, Jake Laughlin, we are gonna hold on that too until the police chief arrives. We have a chapter 90 state aid reimbursable for Rocky Hill Road, Mount Warner Road, South Maple Road, Aloha Way, and Lady Slipper Lane. We have a sealer of weights and measures intermunicipal agreement with the city of Northampton and the town of Hadley yearly agreement. We have a municipal hearing officer, city of Northampton and the town of Hadley yearly agreement. Then we have the Hopkins Academy cross country request for the reservoir use. The cross country team is hosting three races on September 10th. October 1st and October 15th of 2019 at the Bay Road Reservoir. And finally, we have one day liquor licenses again for top of the campus Mullen Center, the Chris Young Concert, Concourse Concessions, Green Room and Block Party in Parking Lot. May I'll I have make a motion? motion to approve with the exception of the two police items and the one day liquor license for the Chris Young concert for further discussion. Just, just for discussion, I think that there is a restriction that the fire chief wanted to put on one of these licenses. That's that's why I just pulled that's that one the out. Chris, yeah, that's that uh, last one. <coughs> okay. Second. Well, I'll, does he, did he get it straightened out whatever restriction you wanted to put on it or not? We're going to talk about that after. Oh, okay. So I pulled that one out. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, except for the DPW Chapter 90. Okay. Do we want to discuss the top of the campus real quick? Uh, one day liquor license and the police chief's uh, restrictions that he wanted on that? The fire chief? Or fire chief, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they actually both have commission, uh, conditions that they want on it, but um, Chief Mason's I've already uh, explained to top of the campus and they've already made the steps. They both they both um, had concerns about the block party. This is a new thing that the Mullen Center is trying. Um, and uh, the police chief would requested that they reach out to the UMass PD and discuss it with them before they went any further with um, setting everything up. And the fire chief is asking for uh, inspections to be required and that there be a fire watch with an executive officer for the event. So like an EOC like we do for the games? Yes. And is by the event organizers, I assume? Yes. Did they discuss the block party? Is that a cordoned off area where they're doing they the party or is it tailgating or is it? They provided a map that. which should be attached and if not, I can Probably give you a is. Copy. Oh, maps, maybe. Um, no, that's the football game. It's an, it's the, I think it's the last batch of them. 
Do you have items? Have a map? As I understand, I can cast this. Sure. Field. Yeah, I don't think I have but a map. It's this section right here with the parking, or the parking and the sidewalk meet. Oh, and so the parking right in the front. Yeah, so between the practice this. rink and the. Can okay. Chief give us a little insight on this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, top of the campus, Mullen Center. The Chris Young concert, it's the block party. Oh, yeah. Um, that was my, my recommendation is uh, just to make sure that they, they uh, talk to the UNTV about the fact that they're going to put up the snow fencing around and how they're going to set the whole thing up. Um, I've spoken with the uh, UMass police chief in the past about things like this, and uh, he's expressed concern only in their barricading type thing. Make sure that they're kind of, like with the 4th of July one, mm -hmm. his concern was to make sure that they had this, a very similar setup, make sure that they had the snow fencing up and they were mm -hmm. doing proper IDs, ID checks and all that. Isn't there a steep staircase right there too? I'm not. Uh, when you, when you're between the two buildings? It's, it's like a three or four steps, I think, not a big one. I oh, I thought there was a steeper one that went down to the ball fields. Oh, in the back. In yes. the back, yes. yeah. 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 I would just be a little bit worried about that too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly about you know what the footing uh, is, but like I said, his his concern in the past had more to do with making sure that you keep underage people out and 21 and older in, and you know he leaves it up to the company to deal with safety mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? Do the young men's club thing? Uh, I would hope. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah, but um, I. My guess is that it'll be a lot smaller. Yeah. The Fourth of July one that they did, there was very similar concerns to this one, and it was very small, very small. And this one, they're saying 300 to 450 people uh, for the block party portion of it. And the block party, you've got to pay to get in, I'm assuming, and then have your ID checked, and then I think that type when of they thing. Say 350 to 400, I think they mean for the total block party, not specifically for the alcohol portion of it. Okay. I don't right. think that's what they're anticipating for that part of it. Okay. That's what they're anticipating for the block party part of it is 350 to 450 mm -hmm. and the concert's 3,000 to 5,000. Okay. I'm comfortable making a motion to approve subject to both chiefs yeah. signing off on the their budget. restrictions. Two. Try it, see how it goes. Second. Thank okay, you. any further discussion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all right, let's do the police department uh, lieutenant MOU. Looking for select board approval on that. I don't know if you guys wanted to say anything about that or. There are no changes except for that which were already approved by the board. Um, the only change was the, the non union personnel increase that was voted on, I think, last fiscal year for this fiscal year. That's the only change to the contract. Uh, we simply need you to approve it annually because of the way that an MOU works. So that's all it is. Okay. Is that is that that the plan to go forward just with an MOU rather than a contract, or is that just what we're doing for now? Yeah, the police lieutenant would not be allowed to have a contract under statute, so we'd have to do the MOU. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have uh, who, who, how do we? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll watch you. Uh, and then we've got a Hadley Police Department appointment for Jake Laughlin, full-time appointment. So as you know, uh, recently. Uh, we had a vacancy come open with uh, Officer Cabrera, sorry, Officer Cabrera leaving to go pursue uh, the state police uh, aspirations. And um, Jake has uh, worked for us since October uh, of 2018 as a special police officer. You probably remember his face. Mm -hmm. uh, he previously worked in the capacity of a police cadet at UMass, and he's currently a military police officer for the United States Army. Jake is working towards an associate degree in criminal justice from Plato Community College and is balancing that workload with working all manner of shifts here at uh, Hadley Police Department. He has been working nearly full-time hours to fill uh, gaps in our schedule, schedule while we have three officers in the academy, and uh, was the leading candidate for any vacancies in our full-time ranks. Uh, 
with one such position just becoming open with Officer Cabrera leaving. Uh, Jake was the obvious choice, and he accepted the conditional offer, offer with great excitement. Uh, Jake has already qualified for a waiver from the MPTC, which, as you know, is a huge hurdle that we have to get over so mm -hmm. we can get him working immediately. Um, and uh, he can begin working as soon as you decide on his appointment here tonight. Uh, with all those facts, I would recommend that Jake Laughlin be appointed as our newest full-time police officer for the Abbey Police Department. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Have a quiet rest of your evening. <laughs> okay, we can open up the uh, floor to public comment. I don't know if anybody is here for public comment tonight. Jane, did you have any public comments you're going to make tonight? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, uh, oh, I want to remind everybody that the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging is holding a reception of thank you and farewell for Suzanne, our director of six years. It is tomorrow between 1.30 and 3.30. It's a drop-in event. There will be light refreshments, and hopefully everybody in town who's been impacted by her presence should come. Great. Thank you. And where is this? It will be at our current site at the Most Holy Redeemer Parish Hall. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amy, you had a comment? So my comment is, um, so you know that um, working at the bank, I get a lot of people coming through giving comments to me all the time. So I had a comment that someone wanted a um, light between the back of Walmart and um, J.C. Penny, and I just thought I'd mention it, that they're very concerned um, about the crossing, and then the article in the newspaper didn't help, that people are crossing now with uh, wheelchairs and walkers and whatever, and that the there's one. some problems crossing that road, and I know they put a middle lane in there, but I just said, okay, I'm coming to the meeting, I'll mention it. Along with the last three nights of being in on TV, on the local news. Really? <laughs> It was on local news. Uh, I was just on again tonight. Oh, okay. So, What's that one? All right. Okay. They took the bus stop out at Mountain Farms and all, which yeah. we all knew. Yeah. But now they have to either cross Route 9 by Jiffy Louvre or they have to cross uh, South Maple Street between Walmart and J.C. Penn. And there's no crosswalk on South Maple Street as of right now. Like, there's no way to get to the button bike path push the button to get across to get to either mall. Is that something that we can encourage the DOT to, talk, to, to talk to PBTA? Or yeah. yeah, so if PBTA has made this decision, so we can yeah. call into them. Okay, but I mean, it seems like the, the DOT also had something to do with that design as well, right? I think it was P, mostly PBTA, and they actually saw Maple Street pass a point. I don't know exactly where it is, yeah. is ours now. The uh, David Moskin said today that as the PBTA rep for the town, I guess, or, mm -hmm. or one of them, um, no one told him they were discontinuing service there either. Yeah. So he, it was a surprise to him. From the paper, it was the Mountain Farms Mall, the yeah. and the, the the reconstruction of the roads in there. The concern about bus safety within the mall there. So I don't know. Yeah. It seemed like there was an ongoing invest or discussion between Mountain Farms and PBTA, so. So you and I had a conversation about this. Uh, you were mentioning some of the internal construction. Do you have any further insight? Yeah, uh, nothing was mentioned about PBTA being taken out of the site. Uh, and I think there has to be discussions with several groups trying to get something back. Uh, that, that's going to be a little problem. And when L.O. Bean and Montengrill open up, it's going to be worse. Yeah. 
Oh, because the only bus be. stops on the corner of Bruce and Penny right now. Yeah. Uh, before it was right by Walmart, I believe. Right. Across right. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I believe from that DOT meeting we went to a couple months ago, they were talking at that point as well about yeah. putting in a better bus stop along Route 9 and eliminating the one from Mountain Farms Mall. So okay. I don't know if this is an extension yeah. or a precursor to that road construction, but I remember that distinctly from the meeting. So. Yeah, but that's a few years down the road, so yeah. I don't know yeah. what's going to happen what in, the meantime. in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. They could possibly get that stop back at Long Farm as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. When I hear back from PBTA, I'll let people know. Yeah. All right. We uh, have a presentation scheduled for uh, 6 45. Uh, David Rotano, who was our intern for the summer, uh, would like to give us a presentation on his summer work. So yes. before, you, before you begin, this is uh, David's second internship with us. Uh, mm -hmm. He was with us last year, student of Hopkins Academy, and you're a rising senior, aren't you? I am, okay. so definitely excited about that. And last year he worked uh, a lot on the service delivery plan update, which is one of the documents that we presented to SSB Global to help us get the AAA bond ratings. So some credit rebounds on to you for that as well. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And uh, this has been another year of learning for me, definitely, and uh, it continues to be, because I, uh, I made a, a specific PowerPoint presentation for this, but uh, neglected to call in uh, to get a projector set up. So I will be giving this presentation orally <laughs> without assistance, so you know, you just got to keep learning. So in terms of what I did this year, this was uh, another big year for the service delivery plan. Um, less so than, than the amount of edits that needed to be made last year. A lot of the work that I did last year did carry over to this year. This year was more updating rather than restructuring the service delivery plan in essence. So basically what that meant for us was uh, new budgets, uh, updated personnel things, updated organizational charts because of the uh, reforms made to the police department and to the treasurer's office. So those have been properly reflected in the service delivery plan. And uh, beyond that, it's just updates to the cherry sheet and, um, and that kind of information at the end of the document. And that's really all that needed to be done. So a pretty, pretty quick fix, nothing, nothing much to worry about there. And that's all ready to go for um, the next time you have to present it to SFP or whoever you're looking to present it to. Um, in terms of the other work that I did, I did a lot of work for the uh, planning board this year. This was um, where uh, basically what they had me doing was I, um, they gave me these big binders full of meeting minutes back from like 1978 and stuff all the way up to 2019. So I spent a lot of time in the copy room. Those all got scanned through. So those are all digitized, ready to go. And, um, and it's, it's good because having those things on hand on the computer is a lot easier than having to rifle through a, a million sheets of paper at a time trying to figure out the, the one specific meeting that, you, that you're looking for. So having it all online, having it in those folders allows it to be more organized and allows it to be generally more efficient and take up less space um, for the purposes of archiving and stuff like that. Beyond that, there was uh, some work that I did uh, in terms of assisting with the, uh, the development of a commercial development protocol. Um, and so basically what that was, was um, uh, seeing that there was a little bit of um, improvements that could be made to interdepartmental communication when it came to building projects regarding commercial development. Um, David and some other people came up with the idea to come up with a set protocol to, uh, to basically just figure out what each department's responsibilities would be and what everyone would do in order to communicate each other in, uh, during a commercial development process. And this allows for greater interdepartmental communication, allowing for greater efficiency, and allowing such processes to be expedited um, far more than they were before. So makes the people who are trying to build here happy, makes us happy because we don't have to worry about doing a million things at a time, and just... Um, generally makes things easier for us. Beyond that, um, there was work that I did for the 
building inspector as well, where um, much like last year, came through, shuffled around all their files, did a bunch of uh, general tidiness stuff with that. So got everything put away, uh, closed out some old permits that needed to be closed out on the uh, on the computer program that they gave me. So those are all filed and uh, nicely stored away. And I also helped to create an organizational. Um, uh, ba basically, an organizational chart format so for the um, all the plans up above the uh, the filing cabinet. So you've got all those little blueprints and uh, and sheets of like um, basically little project plans all rolled up and curled up in in uh, in these nice little rolls. And uh, essentially, what I did was looked through all of the uh, all of the cubby holes filled with those things and figured out which um, individual projects were in each one so that I could create an organizational chart to show people and allow for a greater, easier navigation of the, entire, uh, of the entire room. So basically you can find what you're looking for faster, is, uh, is that. And um, beyond that, there was, I, I also worked on the um, administrative and finance policies, doing some updates to those. Um, uh, I sent out a bunch of things to all the different departments who are hopefully making edits now to uh, their sections of the of the administrative and finance policies. I know David got me back his, and uh, and those edits have been reflected in the uh, in the final document. So this well done, David. Well yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, this is just another quality of life document. It allows us to take a look at what needs to be done in any given circumstance, um, such as, for instance, fraud was a pretty big one in there, and uh, and also, of course, uh, procurement. And, and anti-fraud. And yes, anti-fraud. Uh, <laughs> anti-fraud specifically. We don't want to start any start any debates in front of the camera. But um, but yes, basically, that's. Um, that was pretty much the the extent of my of my experience here. I, I did actually work with the treasurer as well. I shouldn't forget them, uh, working on payroll distribution as well. So basically, stuffing envelopes, getting them was all printed out, and getting people their money. So, and 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 that's pretty much that, um, among other little little smaller jobs. So I once again would like to thank the select board for having me. I'd like to thank you for once again for the amazing experience that I had this year. Um, and last year, and I would like you to thank, and I would like to thank you for uh, sending some money my way this time. That was very generous <laughs> of you all. And, uh, I'm, I'm, very, uh, I'm very, uh, very grateful for, for everything that you guys have done for me. And uh, I hope that my work is something that you've looked to and been, uh, and been happy with as well. So that's pretty much that. Thank you very much. Well, the school's not through. that far away. You don't have to stop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So David also helped me with the MassWorks uh, grant application. It was, uh, we were working together on getting that done, and we beat the deadline by 45 minutes. It's a $200,000 ask from the state, so thank you for your help with that. Absolutely. My pleasure. Are you still considering a future career in public administration? Uh, well, we're, we're definitely going to have to think about that one. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Um, <laughs> It's, you know, on the list of options, certainly. Sure. It's always it's always an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should seriously think about it. You did extremely well. Yeah, and moving forward, you're applying to colleges. If you need any recommendations from the board or anything along that line, please uh, feel free to hit us up. I'd be happy to oh, absolutely will put something together. <laughs> yeah, you've done a fabulous job, yeah. <laughs> That's very Great. Thank, thank you, David. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, David. <laughs>few minutes before our seven o'clock CPA uh, appointment. <laughs> yeah, let's do the schedule. Um, here we go. So we have some upcoming dates for, thank you very much, for select board meetings this coming fall and winter. We have uh, September 4th, uh, I probably need to look at my calendar as I'm doing this as well, just to make sure. Uh, September 4th, uh, September 28th. Oh. Wait. It should be September 25th, I believe. 
25th. 25th. Yep. Um, October 2nd. Uh, actually, that one I do have a conflict for right now. I don't know. And we have. And we have something every else. Every single. Yeah, and then One, it's two, three, four, the ninth. Six in a row. Um, do you want to skip that one and do the ninth, or is that what? How critical is the second, or can we do it a different? Um, you're going to be posting on the, the the ninth is the last day to post, so you're going to be working on the warrant. So if you can devote a lot of time to September twenty eighth to working on the warrant. Uh, you can the skip 25th. the second, but uh, definitely have to hold tonight. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, I mean, we may have it. If something comes up, we may just want to start the 25th uh, at 6 or something instead, so yeah. we can fit it in and not be... The 20, yeah, 25th. 25th at 6? Okay. Good idea. And then, so scratch the second. Yep. And then uh, October 9th. Um, the 16th. Looks good. 17th. That is the public forum for special town meeting. Then we have the 24th is special town meeting. Do we want to have anything the 23rd to a quick meeting to review anything before town meeting, or we think we're good? That is a lot. Usually you have a meeting Place before holder. town meeting. Before town meeting, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Like an hour before or something? Yeah. So the night of 20. It'll be 6 o'clock on, on the 24th. 24th. Yeah. 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 24th, October 24th. But, but not on the 23rd? Is that what we're saying? And we can always schedule it if we have to. Maybe yeah. caution yeah. people against doing anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we have uh, November 6th. Looks good. November 13th, all boards meeting. November 20th, December 4th, and then before Christmas, December 18th. Okay. Does all look? For the um, all boards meeting, <clears throat> we should have a discussion about what the agenda is going to be. Yeah. Because as soon as we tell anybody that we want an all boards meeting, they want to know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. And I think last year we did the planning board, did a presentation, right? Yep. Okay. Finance committee good with these dates? With which one oh. with the all boards? That would be November, November 13th. 9th and 13th. 9th and 13th, I'll send out. I, I would say so, but I, I'd have to send out it. Yeah, so November 6th would be the tax classification hearing. Yes. And uh, November 13th would be the all boards meeting. Okay. Okay. Pause for a minute. <laughs> uh, no, we could uh, we can launch into the CPA uh, committee. <laughs> Here we go uh, to discuss the future of CPA and Hadley. Uh, several we have pondered having several articles at uh, fall town meeting to look at the CPA um, percentage that gets contributed to the CPA fund. Right now it is a 3% uh, contribution that we give to CPA. We have looked into possibly reducing that percentage to 2% instead of 3% in order to dedicate more funds to, to bolstering the sewer enterprise fund. Um, it did come to my attention today that if we were to pursue anything like that, change in CPA funding 
we would have to have a town meeting vote and then we would have to have a ballot vote that would be held at a regular town or state election. So if we did do any changes like this, we couldn't, and it got approved at town meeting, we couldn't actually have a vote on changing that CPA percentage until I think it's March 2nd, Super Tuesday uh, of 2020. So it would be, you know, a bit out before we were actually able to make any changes. And I don't know how that would all affect, but we wanted to basically have you guys, or you all here tonight to, you know, speak your side of the story about the importance of that 3%, where you think you feel, what you think kind of CPA projects we're looking at in the future and how we're going to use that money. Because I think some, some members of the board were feeling like, oh, there's a lot of money in CPA fund. Do we need to contribute more there if we don't have anything specific we're working on? And so wanted to have you in to discuss, discuss that mm -hmm. issue. And also, I think um, when we met last, we didn't have complete information about the actual dollars mm -hmm. that we're talking. And it sounds like the state has made some changes that would be important to this discussion as well relative to the match percentage. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually going up. And that's that's one thing I wanted to bring up. I uh, was brought aware of this as well, that CPA funding, if you are in that 3% category, you can get pretty, there's several rounds of CPA funding. So there's a first round where you get X amount of dollars, but then if you're at that 3%, you can go two and even three rounds of additional funding to contribute towards CPA. So. I mean, there are a lot of benefits to getting that, you know, quote unquote, free money to, to keeping that CPA percentage at 3% if we have projects we're looking at doing with that money. So I don't know if you guys have anything to contribute or your thoughts if this was presented at town meeting, what you'd stand up and say and, you know, uh, to, to kind of uh, look at CPA. Okay, well, thanks for uh, inviting us. I'm Andy Morris Friedman. I'm the current chair of the Hadley Community Preservation Act Committee. I want to thank the other committee members for being here to help support me and the CPA. And to thank my wife, Michelle, who's covering my martial arts class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry about that. Uh, how long do we have? Uh, as long as you'd like. How long, do you, how long do you want? <laughs> 10, 15 minutes? 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, that must mean how far back, you know, to go in the past. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Hadley adopted the CPA in 2004. It was a unanimous vote in town meeting. There have been 72 approved projects. Uh, only two projects were rejected by town meeting. That's a pretty good percentage. 28% um, of them have been to preserve open space, five for housing. We could talk about that. Uh, 32 historic and seven for recreation. Uh, the total amount given to the to Hadley by the state, I just approximated it. Uh, the state match is 1.94 million dollars since 2004. Uh, Hadley's contributed 2.9 million for a total of 4.82 million dollars uh, since 2004. The match has gone down. Every good thing seems to not be as good as it once was that way. Um, but it's still averaged 75.8% a year. This year's match was 41%. Um, what Christian said was right. Uh, um, there's three CPA rounds. There's a round that everybody gets. There's the round that small towns get. There's the round that uh, towns and cities at 3% get. And that's really the good one. It's like being seated into the playoffs, if I can use it. Um, that's why we got 43%. In fact, Hadley is fifth in terms of recipients, in terms of total dollars per capita. In the uh, whole state? In the state, yeah. Because um, we hit all three sweet spots. <clears throat> um, let's see. Also, from the CPA Commission, oh, um, the treasurer says we have 1.66 million dollars currently in the CPA fund. So we definitely available. have been available. Yeah. Available. Yeah. Right. There's another Because it's 500 right. earmarked for available. something. Right. right. 
Um, and we have some really interesting projects, you know, on the books right now. Um, uh, you know, at CPA, we get criticized for using the money and for not using the money. Um, that's just the way it goes, I guess. I don't have to tell you guys that. <laughs> um, uh, but we feel really seriously about our responsibilities. It's the people's money. And we're not just giving it away. It's collected for specific uses. Uh, and it's also prohibited for sp specific uses. And sometimes it's hard to tell from the regulations which is prohibited and which is allowed. Uh, and that's where the difficulty is coming. Uh, we use the CPA coalition in Boston, and we have some pretty good discussions within our committee uh, to make sure that people's money is used wisely. Um, I think the fact that only two proposals have been denied uh, shows that we're doing a pretty good job with that. All right, so um, the hard numbers are hard to calculate in the future because the state match changes, the amount of money available to the towns changes because it's uh, registry fees that funds the CPA fund. I don't know why they did it that way, but that's the way they did it. Um, and so we, if there's a lot of deed registry action, we, we all get more money. Uh, also, some towns join, right? Uh, when Boston came in, the whole pot of money just shrank like the oil sea in Russia, you know, talking about. And, um, uh, and then also property values in Hadley go up, so there's more money because it's a 3% surcharge based uh, on your property taxes minus the first thousand, $100,000 of, of that um, for, uh, for uh, senior citizens and other hardship cases, they can apply for a, an exemption. Um, okay, so uh, uh, last, well, let's, yeah, last year at 3% um, in the state match round one, we got $50,000, a little more. We got a little more than $40,000 in round two, and $24,000, a little more in round three, for a total of $381,941. That was $14. Thank you, Edwin. Coach here. That was a 43.5% match. So if we had been at 2%, we would have only gotten 33737 in round one, nothing in round two, nothing in round three, uh, for a uh, total amount, including the Hadley amount, uh, would be 211,164, only 19%. So what was the amount last year with the Hadley amount plus the matching funds, the total? Uh, yeah, I'll show, I'll, I'll show you this. And then okay. right. Yeah, you got copies of it. Uh, I have one copy. Of it. <laughs> I have any copies? Yeah. I, I, okay. I have. So the, um, so the total difference the reduction in Hadley and the reduction in state money means we lose $170,750. It's really $80,750 because you're taking the 90 from the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's for this year. Okay. That's with a state match of 43%. Next year, the match is supposed to be 80%. So you have to roughly double that, so that would be like $160,000 we'd be giving out mm -hmm. the next year, more or less. Uh, and then the governor has made it a priority to bring the 100% match back. Who knows? Whatever it'll have to be. Um, so that's... Anybody else? Andy, can I just ask a question on that? Yeah. Um, are there any proposed changes in the CPA guidelines? that are coming along with these percentage changes? Or is it just the existing program as is and purely funding that's changing? Uh, the, the percentage is based on the amount of revenues brought in from the, uh, you know, from license that you transfer fees, whatever it is they're called. She wants to know when they're changing what the money can be spent on. Um, they, I don't think there's any, I don't think any, there's anything like Substantial? Worse. They recently just changed it to include, uh, you know, recreation. In addition to right. open space, but the three categories: housing, history, and uh, open, space. open space recreation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, C 
CPA is kind of like a 401k. All right. um, you put in a certain amount, you being the town, and the state is like the employer. It puts in a certain amount. Um, and that way, it grows, the money you have grows even faster. Um, it might be good to, instead of funding your 401k, buy a new car, you know, or put a wing on the house or whatever, but then you lose your employer's match and you're really hurting yourself in the long run. Uh, I think the other thing I wanted to say before I open it up to other community members is that you can't put a time limit on the reduction. You have to have another town meeting vote and another town-wide vote. Yes. And there's uh, a change of time to sequence. Yeah, so it's not, it's just not that, not that much. You want to ask good. Linda also has a piece of this. Anything else? Linda, did you have any comments on this? Um, that's, yeah, yeah and, and he's right on the explanations of the, the percentage, and, and I think he, he, that's right. If I could explain the chart, it might look a little different than what you're saying, because um, because our actual percentage they calculate is 31, and you get the 40 because because of the additional surplus that we, we get in. This chart shows um, that we were at 31.5% for our last distribution. We actually received 115,775. Um, our, our round one distribution would have been just 83,000, but because we have 3% in and not a 2% or a 1%, we got that almost uh, $32,000 extra uh, in those last two rounds. This chart's interesting because it takes, is this the one that you had, Andy? Uh, I have a simple one. Okay. Um, yeah. It's interesting because the, this is uh, the article of, of, this was from the article about the increase this coming year, and how this increase would go from 31.5% to 76%, that would mean our basic round would have been 202,000 instead of 83. And then our surplus on top of that, I don't know. Let's just say it was the same. It would be at least another 30000 mm -hmm. So when you talk about shifting 90000 and gaining 90000 by sparing the taxpayers that 90000 in order to have it come from another source, we're not just, so we're then losing not just that 90000 which is a third, but we're losing a third of this, what would have been 83 or 202, that's almost 60 something, 65,000 plus dollars more that we would lose. And we not, would not get those later rounds. And I, oh, the, the other piece on that is that we do have the money in the account. And, and he's right that we have 1.6 million available, but we've actually been carrying 2.1 million in the account because they have about a million dollars worth of expense, uh, approved items that are coming out at a slower basis. We had over $60,000 investment income on that account. Um, like uh, the CPA funds, again, can be a, a invested more aggressively than our general funds, and so it's a good place for us to be burning, earning the extra money. So it really has been bringing us, even in the years that people are frustrated they haven't spent as much, we're gaining in other ways. We still get that state distribution, we still get the money in there, and we still get the investment income. And they actually, the last couple of years, you spent half a million at the annual town meetings, and I think the year before it was another, between the two meetings, another 500,000. So they do spend, I know things are rejected and people get disappointed about various things that don't go through quickly and easily but bottom line is they're spending half a million a year and, and that's that's pretty much keeping us even the last couple of years like because that's very close to what we've been taking in so it's a great investment for the town and, and i would i would like to see it stay but let me just clarify we aren't spending it yeah. Town meetings are authorized yeah. by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, one of the reasons we got this AAA rating is because the auditor said, you guys have $4 million in the bank, half of which was CPA. Mm -hmm. So it does benefit us that way. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on the committee have anything they want to? Well, I, I wanted to uh, say that um, as CPA co uh, committee member and as the finance chair, I would be very much against changing this percentage. Yes, I can see the frustration sometimes when um, 
uh, maybe it's it's more of the communication, not thinking it's being spent, but it is being spent. And being a member on this committee, I do see it being spent, like for the fields um, over at um, the school. And you know, all this all this uh, property that is now um, preserved. You know, how many how many acres do we have preserved? You know, four thousand. Four thousand acres. I mean, so. But just the numbers alone, as far as finance committee, you know, when I look at those numbers, I just think, I, I, I don't think it's a smart move whatsoever to take a small, to, to lower that percentage because we're going to be losing so much in numbers um, based off of what we're, we're going to be losing from the state, based off of what we're going to be losing from investments, based off of our future, that we won't be able to fund some of these projects that we need to fund. We got things like, um, big projects that we want to fund, and, and, a, and the biggest project right now it happens to be the school, but what happens when we, everyone decides what we want to do with Russell School? You know, we may need that money because it's a historic. We want to look at Golden Court and we want to help them. So there's some big projects we're looking at, and um, you know, sometimes we just see some small ones, and it's not, I think it's more of the communication to get out to the, to the taxpayers, because there's only a small amount of people that actually see what's actually happened that go to the town meeting. We're talking between 100, 200 people versus the, the town of 5,000. I think, and it's only the people that go to this town meeting, the same people all the time that actually know what's happening. Sometimes other, maybe we should look at putting some signs up, but I mean, people don't know what we're spending it on, and yeah. but we are spending it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'll just say, I appreciate you know, when we when this discussion came up, like a lot of things, things kind of come up <laughs> and they get talked about. Um, and we don't always have all of the information in front of us. So I appreciate having the full scope of this for consideration as opposed to just kind of one piece of it. Oh, you know, the difference between 3% and 2% is X. You do the calculation quickly, but it's far more, it's a lot more than involved in that. Yeah, and I think that the... And it, certainly the fact that the percentage change is going up that significantly is also a, a key consideration because now we're talking about a lot more money that we'd be looking at the opportunity cost of that. So, Absolutely. so thank yeah. you for coming yeah. and explaining Quite all honestly, of this. In plain English, to get our $93,000 that we were looking at to lose $202,000 every year for the next X amount of years. It just doesn't sense. add up. Yeah, no. Yeah. Financially and good business practices tell me absolutely not. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, talking about using the 1% to pay put towards the sewer, I mean, the taxpayers are still going to pay the same amount of money. Right. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. they're going to get a bigger bang for their buck. Mm -hmm. Their one percent, if the money stays in the CPA, than if they if it gets put into the sewer fund. The other thing that bothers me about that is now you're going to make everybody in town responsible for paying for the sewer, and what percentage of people in town actually use the sewer? Uh, it, what is it? I, I, no, I really don't have any idea. Is it 80 percent, 90 percent, 10 percent? 900 sewer customers out of 5,000. Well, yeah, 900, 900, 900 households. 900, 900, 900 households, households out of 2,100. Uh, 2,100, I think. Yeah. So it's called so it's about 30 percent. And that the main all route nine is on sewer. So a lot of the yeah. big businesses and, that you and know. I'm sure you've been watching the conversations. And the conversation is the business portion of route nine, the, the industrial section that they have implemented way back before all of us has been paying a substantial amount of taxes to offset the residential rates. Mm -hmm. So at this point, our discussion at the table here all the time has been take, to put everything back through taxation and just be one big happy family again instead of charging this guy this much, this guy this much. And it, it's, it's a number shuffle right now at this point because we, we have no money in some of these accounts. And since Treasurer has been going through and with the uh, payrolls in all these departments, with all the health uh, uh, health payments in all, the, all these departments, you know, and they've all been growing, the retirement accounts have been growing, the OPEB's been growing, and they haven't been substantially 
modified to X amount of employees in this department cost this much money to run this department. We, we, this is where we're at. It, it's all got to come out, you just said it, it's all got to come out of somewhere. Right. So if we went back through, and I, I said it a few times, take capital improvements as we do with the water quite a few times instead of a lot of water fees and take them out of uh, capital projects through taxation, it would alleviate some of the stress we have on the, on the operating budgets in the water and the sewer. And some of us still have a hard time understanding that. Just to refocus back to the CPA yeah. for a second. Yeah, we're not going to. Um, I think we all understand the impulse to not raise taxes. And as taxpayers, I think we all appreciate it. Um, so sometimes you have to cut something to pay for something else. But CPA is not the thing to cut because it's really a cut and 40% more. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just from this, you know, if we contributed. 80,000, eight, almost 90,000 less in CPA, we'd be losing $80,000 in additional funding. So we're doubling our money in a year, essentially. Right. I mean, how can you beat that? <laughs> Anybody would no, take that investment would, if, if you could get it. If you put that money in a bank account, yeah. what, what would you get for interest? Okay. Technically, yeah. we're getting 43% interest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, in that's this good. day and age, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to usurp anybody's position or anything, but my name's Edwin Matuska, I'm the former chair of the CPA committee. I've never been on a committee in this town that we've had such lively discussions. We don't just say, oh, yeah, here, you can do yours, you can do yours, you can do yours, you can do yours. We used to, now people present a proposal, we take them home, we study them, we look at them, we peruse them, we meet again in two weeks. A voluntary board, no, no less. We're doing this because we like this town. That's why we're doing this. And then we come back and with a whole list of questions. What does this mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? I'm beginning, we started at, uh, putting a time limit on the projects because there are, um, Andy has found out that there are projects that are still, got money in their coffers that they haven't spent, but we have to go through the steps to retrieve it. Mm -hmm. We can't just say, well, you didn't spend it, so now we're taking it back. No, we put a time limit on our projects now, so now we can. If you don't spend it after two years, you lose it. Makes sense. And the reason why sometimes it looks like we don't spend the money is we don't get requests for it. It's as simple as that. And anything to do with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has a bundle of strings attached to it. So we can't, as a committee, we can't say, oh, yeah, we can spend this, we can spend that. No, we can't. We vet every single project with Boston. And I know Andy has in close contact with Stuart Saginaw, the chairman of the CPA uh, coalition in Boston. And they go back and forth. How can you change this to make it work? How can you change that to make it work? So this is, it's not, it's still gonna cost me, it's still gonna cost you, and it's still gonna cost you the same amount of money. It's just where does it go? Does it go, in, does it go underground and you flush the toilet? Or does it go when you drive by and you see land, or you see a preserved building, or you see uh, fences around cemeteries. That's what this money is going for. And I guess you get the idea that this is not a really good idea to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you, Edwin. Does anybody else have anything additional to add uh, other than what we've already kind of gone over? Uh, David, I, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone else? Was there someone else? No, I was going to I was going to ask a question, but maybe you're going to ask the same one. I was going to ask if the select board would consider withdrawing the word article. Uh, that was going to be my the motion. <laughs> Make a motion to uh, pull the placeholder on the warrant for the CPA item only. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, let me I'll just say I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come before the select board or any other town board any time to explain the 
details and intricacies of the CPA process. Yeah. Well, so yeah. after you approve it, the state still has to approve it is what it comes down to, technically. Well, well no, there's, there's no CPA police, okay? And a lot of towns take a lot of liberties, and there's a lot of controversy. So in Hadley, we tried to, you know, Joe Fitzgibbons was the first uh, chair. He said, we're going to do stuff by the book. And, you know, we've tried to add a couple of chapters to the book since he left. Um, but we still try to do things by the book because it keeps us out of trouble. Uh, and frankly, it keeps us out of town politics. You know, each project is valued on its own. And that's the main strength, I think, of the CPA committee. Can I make a request of the committee as a whole that when the next tax bills go out, if you could put together maybe a one-page insert to basically inform the public that doesn't go to town meeting, maybe some past projects, what CPA funds are typically used for, so that way... Like your CPA dollars at work, right. you see that around the, other communities. Maybe things yeah. that are underway, things that have been done in the past, because like she said, 100, 200 people see it in town meeting and the other 4,800 don't. So. Right. That's a good idea. Happy to do it. Mm -hmm. That's a good mm -hmm. idea. All right. Jane? I would like to thank you for the work you do. <laughs> I think he does a wonderful job, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't your money after the we have, a, uh, <laughs> we have a motion here, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Jane just wanted to thank him. I'd like to thank the whole board for all mm -hmm. your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not going to change it. We're not going to change it. <laughs> and everyone on the CPA committee is also on another town committee, except for me. So, <laughs> double duty for the CPA. Thank you. But yeah. you interview people at town meetings, so that must count for something early. Yeah. <laughs> Happy meeting. Yeah. Thank well, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for willing to speak with us. So, yeah, well, appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for all the information. Mm -hmm. Andy, uh, just while I have you here, do you have any updates you want to share with everybody about Valley Bike, that meeting? I haven't gotten a chance to talk to you. Oh, have yeah, you? I'm, uh, I'm back, on the, back in the saddle yeah. as uh, Hadley's bicycle whatever. <laughs> Advocate. Um, and uh, I went to the big meeting in Northampton. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting. The program is very interesting. It's expanding and it's collapsing. And it's got incredible potential and unbelievable problems. And I don't know how they're going to solve them, but they're going full speed ahead. Huh? And uh, it was very interesting. And maybe Hadley will be a part of it, and maybe it won't. Okay. But I'm willing to keep people posted and, and you know, do one part. Okay, yeah, we'll have to be in touch about it. See what, what's going on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think they said uh, 200,000 miles in the first year with bicycles were good. Uh -huh. Wow. That's a lot. That's yeah, a lot of miles. A lot of miles. Very, very interesting discussion about the distribution of bikes. Springfield and Holyoke are not getting the number of bikes that they're supposed to. Hmm. And everyone thinks it's racism. Maybe it is. Hmm. You know, Amherst gets the number of bikes it's supposed to. Northampton wow. does. So when you say gets them, gets them from where? Well, there's a certain number of bikes available. Right. Right. But they're supposed that the number of bikes available is supposed to be much higher. But they're having a lot of problems keeping the bikes on the road. Hmm. So if there were fewer bikes available than they were supposed to do, who gets fewer? Oh, okay. Holyoke and Springfield. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, yes. Okay. How many bicycles yeah. do they have right now? I don't remember. But 200,000 miles, that's it's a lot of yeah. mileage. Yeah. They got one bike. It's like light speed. All right, our next thing uh, is on the agenda here is secession planning. Um, you know, there's a number of uh, town off officers, officials that have announced their plans for retirement. And one of those was the building inspector. And we'd just like to talk about how we can ease that transition. You know, we're seeing right now with the Council on Aging Director transitioning that position and just with other positions uh, around town, how can we make those transitions smooth? There's a lot of institutional knowledge that, especially in the building department, all the plans in the office that 
um, successor will need to understand, among other things. So well, at least they're labeled and yeah, I mean, they are now. David was here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, we, Tim, if you have anything to add to kind of. Uh, well, and that's why I wanted to bring it up now mm -hmm. because I want to give you the time to to think about it. See, I mean, it's going to be critical. Uh, my date right now is going to be April 16th, 2020. It gives us plenty of time to figure out what to do. And I, um, I'm very concerned about the future. And the reason is, is there's not a lot of building commissioners in the state. Mm -hmm. And they have stated that next year with so many at my age, at retirement, they're going to be short 200 building commissioners. 200? 200. Wow, okay. And what is happening right now is everybody's jumping ship from one town to the other based on salary. And we're seeing it here, too, in the uh, western part right now. A lot of guys are jumping from one town to the other because the towns are uh, in need and they the only way to to cover that is to raise the salaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, unfortunately, I'll be truthful, I think that's going to happen here too. Um, but I want, I want a good transition. Uh, I've, I started this job 31 years ago, uh, and it was supposed to be for only six months. I promised the town, here I am 31 years. Mm -hmm. It's been great. It's been fantastic. Uh, <coughs> certainly when I started, I made the papers from Boston all the way down to Florida with regard to how the town was able to accept me and my family to do this job. And it certainly did hit all the papers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it hit town meeting floor several times in regards to issues with kids and everything. Uh, but it all worked out greatly and um, the next chapter is going to start next year. <coughs> I, I see. I talked to a few of you in regards to who I felt would be good to uh, review resumes. We certainly have to go out and advertise. I've made it abundantly clear I think that we really should have both of the chiefs involved in this. I interact with them almost daily, and I really feel that both chiefs should be part of uh, the process of figuring out who's going to be our next building commissioner. I, I would also like to recommend uh, David Tudrin, uh, and the reason is, is because of his vast knowledge in architecture. Uh, I think he would be valuable to review that, mm -hmm. but that is certainly up to you. It's your purview on who, who we would have, and hopefully you would allow me to be part of that. Um, and certainly I'm looking at April 16th, uh, but I am, you know, I've, I'm part of this town and I'm always going to be part of this town. If there's a need, I'm going to be here for it, for the town. Uh, I can be the alternate for some time. Whatever you guys want to work out. The, um, but, I mean, the first critical issue is, I think there's got to be a review of the salary for the next person. And that review should be looking at other towns and what they're paying right now. And they're all, right now, they're all across the board. And they're going up <laughs> quickly. Because there's, there's a number of towns right now that are short in Western Mass, and people are jumping back and forth. A lot of the okay. spa, small towns go to regional. A lot of the small towns, up in the hill towns, got regional still. The COG has been very successful. Yeah. They have um, a group of inspectors that do the towns. Uh, and that is something 
I mean, we will never be able to join the COG because for the amount of work that we have, it would be horrendously expensive. But there are other ways that we can look at this position. With the number of building commissioners uh, in need, it might be a possibility for the town to start looking at a building commissioner that, that would work for more than one town. We have several small towns here that have had serious problems keeping inspectors. It could very well be uh, that maybe you could share one with the majority of the time here. What that would mean is that a local inspector would have to be hired. And that might not be a bad way of looking at the future. Uh, because there's a lot of things that I do that is very repetitive with the inspections, especially the yearly inspections, and we have quite a number of them. So we can start looking at different ways of setting the position up. And uh, uh, I know that Orange and a couple few other uh, towns have done that very successfully when um, uh, their building commissioner left a number of years ago, uh, Brian Gale, he actually went to, floor, uh, to Hawaii. And uh, they actually set up a way of actually having him <coughs> work out of Hawaii in several towns with them coming back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, he has family here, he always comes back. Mm -hmm. But we could look at that. <coughs> um, I'm very concerned this town with the diversity of commercial work, you're not just going to be able to hire anybody uh, to do a good job. And, you know, that is, that is something that um, will affect all if we get, get somebody that's not at a good par for what, is, what we need because it will affect our insurance ratings right. over time. Mm -hmm. Tim, okay. can I just ask if we wanted to share um, inspection services with another town? And so, I mean, the heavy lifting, I'm assuming, is the commercial side of things, right? I mean, that's where, yes. right? You're not going to bring a somebody, you know, what behind the ears in for that one. but. Um, could, could you theoretically, like on the residential side, share that relatively easily for home inspection type stuff with, with other area towns? Yes. Okay. And the... Because um, that's more cookie cutter, right? Yeah. yeah. And that the would annuals. be good for a local inspector. Yes. Okay. Do well, I, I just heard at the beginning of the meeting, we've got veteran services, we've got seals and measures, we've got a municipal hearing officer that we're sharing with Northampton. And I'm always looking into what it costs us for the department and what, a, what it would cost us to merge or regionalize with someone else. I've always brought it up for just about everything. So I don't know if it's something really worth taking a look at or not. I would say the only concern I would have would say a Northampton or Amherst merge would be the, the customer service. We've tried that. that yeah. yeah. But you know, maybe with Sunderland or some some other smaller town that's more like Hadley. Than, Sunderland or yeah. Deerfield. Deerfield. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Something. Could be. Grand South Hadley. They've got their own. They've all had problems trying to keep inspectors. Mm -hmm. Do do does this call for um, any kind of subcommittee to look into our options a little bit more detail? Like I don't. I, I don't want to suggest any more subcommittees, but I want, I want to nominate Joyce. Yeah, yeah. We're, Joyce uh, has offered to head up this. <laughs> no, but I, I, I don't. There, it seems like there's a lot of options out there we could possibly do. How do we narrow it down to something we want to execute? You know, I think in a way it's easy to just say let's let's get a. a you fall out, somebody else falls in, you know, that's easy, but all these other options are a lot more mm -hmm. complicated when it's unsure-footed. It's got to go through a, a higher 
position. The yeah. Administrators have to start talking. The HR, mm -hmm. the but HR could, person we don't have yet. Mm -hmm. But could you lay out, Tim? Um, and I think this is something we asked of the planning board to say just, you know, we're not building inspector experts. We don't know what all the models are out there. So you're just rattling them off. And I'm thinking about different things. But maybe you could even <coughs> lay out, you know, these are the man hours needed full time in Hadley, and then kind of break, break out what could be shared. Um, you know, kind of just the different variations of that. Basically, that's what I was said. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get a full time local inspector. I mean, that take takes a lot. They can do a lot of the mundane stuff, the, the repetitive stuff, the um, annual inspections, and a lot of the smaller inspections of, of the residential. But they would be shared with other communities? Not the local. Oh, not the local. local. It would be the commissioner level that would be shared. The commissioner can be okay. shared. Okay. That's what I was missing. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you could share the commissioner. You, I mean, yeah, there, you could flip it either way. Um, I can tell you right now, I mean, there is, there is much more work than I could possibly do here. Mm -hmm. I have been very, very, um, I think I've, I, it's been, I've been very lucky that nothing's really blown up in my face on a lot of this. And the reason is, is this is a very small group of contractors that work on residential here. Mm -hmm. why, why is that? Because a lot of our stuff is very high end. And you, and there's a lot of um, contractors here that are very well known. I, I can trust them. I can't get out to all the, and do all the inspections. I can't. I just physically, there's not enough time. But I've set up a system where I can work with them. They can send me photos. They can email me stuff, and they do that all the time. And I said, OK, you're all good to go. Yeah. Is it the best system? No. Should I be doing that all the time? Not really, but I don't have enough time to do it. We have to really look at making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing as a town. because. Some other towns have gotten into a lot of trouble over this, mm -hmm. and we don't want to be there. Again, I've been very lucky because we work with the same contractors in residential, and I, I know them well, and I know which ones I can trust, and they're very, very good at calling me and saying, Tim, this is where I'm at, I'm sending you these pictures, and I might even notice something in those photos, and I said, give me another photo of this. Mm -hmm. I know that they're good. They're really good contractors. I can do that. That's not always going to be the case. So mm -hmm. along the lines of what you were talking about, um, can you give us a, a menu of different options and yes. you know pros and cons maybe, and maybe some of them will even be not so good ideas, but at least something we can review to decide which direction we want to go, and and then. You know, we can put out a hiring announcement sometime. Uh, we're probably look, looking at what January at least in order to get it done by April time frame. If sure. not December, before the yeah. turn of the year, yeah. 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 I mean, it does December. take a little while to get it out there and have enough time. It and could be December anyway. First of December, get it out mm -hmm. for a couple mm -hmm. months. Because so. we're yeah. going to want some overlap. Yeah. And David, did you have any comment you wanted to make? Yeah. Or? So in terms of any kind of potential budget impact of uh, Tim's retirement. Congratulations in advance for, to you for that. Well um, done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have two bites at the apple. We can either try to put something together for October 24th, or we can do it at the May 7th, 2020 annual town meeting, uh, which is probably a better way to approach it. You mean for the overlapping positions or for, yeah, for any kind additional of salary? Additional salary or anything, any kind of budget adjustment that we need to make, we can put a FY20 article on the warrant for FY2021 because it occurs within the kind of the fiscal year. So we've got two bites of the apple. Maybe a uh, at least an overlap budget, maybe for uh, this town meeting if we yeah. can do it. Okay. And then 
Well, I was just wondering, what if we have a few things, you know, floating around, and we have that line item in the budget under the select board? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's kind of like an emergency item. It's in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range. I want to say right now we could up that a little bit, and that could kind of be used to cover some of these things. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there instead of putting a specific line right. in somewhere else. So if, if you were if you were looking at April for retirement, would you stick around till July to to help whoever comes into the position? For, for or not to, I got. We are already funded mm -hmm. until July first. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few. Well, again, like I said at the very beginning, yeah, it, it's open as needed. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna let the town. I'm not gonna leave with the town in a in a real problem. Uh, what's a reasonable overlap? I'm sorry. What's a reasonable overlap for a building commissioner? Uh, what's I have been that I don't know. It really depends on how experienced the person is. I, was just say, I mean, yeah. if we get a very exper experienced person that has done commercial, uh, I mean, it's it'd be maybe a few weeks just to go through everything and try to transition what I have into what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's somebody else that, uh, I mean, it could be a little bit longer. So Tim, why don't you and I get together um, between now and, and next Wednesday and let's look at some uh, budget options and we can we can develop something for the, the warrant for the October time. Yeah, and also Ms. Christian, take a look at what we have yeah. too, where we might be able to pull anything from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if it's only yeah. a couple of weeks, then that should cover it. Right, and that's not, but you know, if it's, months, if it's that's, two or three months, yeah. then yeah. it's a little bit bigger dollars. So. I think too, with the hiring process, we'll reveal what we, we need, you know. Right. Once we get an idea of it, we might find a candidate that's maybe a little inexperienced, but more committed than somebody that's got a lot of experience. So it's kind of worth that extra time investment. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Um, it's hard right. to say when we don't know exactly. what the candidate looks like, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, I just hope that when we start interviewing, that we're not just going to pick something, somebody to fill the position. I, 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 it's Bob and I'll just yeah. stay forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've made mistakes in the past. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part of some of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did you get yeah. that on tape? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't hear anybody I think else this, committing to it. <laughs> I know I've said this recently to other people, but I think that the, the board that's in front of you now is very much committed to a continuous improvement theme, meaning right. we don't want to go backwards. So, yep. yeah. Definitely. Okay. Well, anything else to uh, anybody? Anything else? Any motions we want to make out of this? Anything? I can't think of anything well, off I'll the top of my head. But an instruction to work with Tim and present you with some funding yeah. options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think funding options, and then if you could give us some position options, position options maybe what we should be looking at doing, yeah. you know? Um, so that'd be great. Yeah, thank we'll you. Do. Thank you, Tim, for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. Here for Russell School too. Uh, yeah. Do we? Oh, what do? Although, we, did you need to do something? It says senior services director position. Yep. Do you, you need uh, us to act on that before we leave the site? Oh, okay. So sorry. So my, my I think it's the recommendation of uh, the uh, Council on Aging that oh. we take uh, the two positions that are there right now and increase their hours for both of them and then increase the pay for one of them in order to provide as much coverage and continuity of senior services services um, uh, until an, uh, a replacement for Suzanne can be hired. So the recommendation is to increase uh, Violet uh, Suka's hours from 35, which she currently has, to 40 and give her an increase in pay. She re receives about $22 an hour, increase that up to 27 And then with uh, Lauren Hannigan, change her hours currently from 15 to 25 uh, keep her pay at, this, at the current level. So we ran some 
a little hard to tell because we don't know how long we're going to be without a uh, senior services director. But we ran a couple of numbers and it seemed like uh, we could do it within the budget that we have. Well, you have the money, you're not paying Suzanne's. So exactly. Yeah, it, right. there's no impact to the budget. I mean, I. And Jane, is that basically the correct to your understanding as well? Was there any other hour increases that? Uh, no, that's correct. Okay. It might be that violets are only 37 and a half. That's just, I'm not sure where Suzanne and Violet are on that conversation. Could, could we say up to 40 now to for, 40 for the motion? Cool. Okay. So we just check with uh, the treasurer's office to make sure that there's no big changes to benefits or, or anything as far as the, the cost for those hour increases. I'll check out the benefits. Well, 35 yeah, the, hours, she's already getting Yeah, she's already getting them. Well, what's the other one at? And Lauren is on her husband's and does not use benefits. <coughs> but you should confirm that, but that is... How many hours does she have right now? 15 right to now, 25. 15. You would be yeah. increasing her to 25, which would make the position yeah. eligible, but this is a temporary... Temporary, yeah. Increase. Yeah. Well, what's the, the 20 is the break off, isn't it? Yeah, but I think you you need to do a certain amount over the course of an entire yeah. year before that really triggers. And this is a temporary increase. Hard to say because we don't have, we don't know when we're going to get a director. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking that you're not going to see any changes in the, the position would be eligible for benefits, but. As you said, she's not in a position where she's going to be taking it. And I don't think that because it's a temporary change to the position, I don't think you're triggering something that is obligating you in the future. So I'll make a motion to um, increase the number of hours and the salaries as recommended as long as it can be covered in the current budget. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 There is, I believe, a warrant article to raise Lauren's hours to 25 in the fall town meeting. But that's separate and apart that's from... That's separate. Yeah. But, I mean, if it, it... So it might just roll into that. And the reason for that is she's our outreach coordinator, and she, right now she's there Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays from 9 until 2. So she places a call to somebody on Monday, and they get back to her on Tuesday. She's not there. Now we're talking about somebody at risk. They're looking for help. So she gets back on Wednesday and they play phone tag. Mm -hmm. So putting her at 25 hours a week gives her a steady time there, steady time for people to come in. And we are seeing more and more people at risk needing help now that we have somebody who's really out there doing the job. So we're really talking about maybe a month or so of this temporary increase until maybe a town meeting warrant passes where it's right. permanent. Right. Or right. Two months yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the deadline for applications is the 13th, and then by the time we review them, offer somebody a job, and then we notice. And yeah. And our percentage of seniors in our community is the highest in the Pioneer Valley, let's say. So we do have a, yeah, you know, a good percentage of seniors in our community. So I think this is something that we should look, look to, you know, serving that population. All right. Uh, anything else there? Good. Uh, let's look at Russell School Building Committee. Select Board will form a committee to review the options for the Russell School. This was something discussed the last meeting. Um, did we have any? So there's uh, information that I received from the CPA committee just today or yesterday that apparently there were two articles for the Russell School, one for the plan and the other one for the roofing. The roofing was approved, but the plan was not. Can you amplify on, on what that may mean? Well, one of the discussions we've had in the past was, uh, what are we going to do with Russell School? We came up with a total price tag, which, which is exorbitant. So what we wanted to do was um, hire Mr. Tuttle, who's on uh, as an architectural profession, um, to review just being able to s stabilize the exterior of the building. Uh, that was 
we had gone forward for ten thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars, they they say they we have to fund twenty thousand uh, twenty percent. So we were asking eight thousand dollars from CPA, so we could come up with some scenarios of what to do with the building. The scenarios would be from complete renovation of the building to maybe a partnership or, or something else and um, all the way to uh, demolition. We don't have prices. We don't have any idea what these things would cost to be able to present to the um, people, the, the residents. So what we wanted was the $8,000 from them to, to, to um, have Larry help us come up with some scenarios. What can we do with the building? And uh, where, what kind of grants we can get? But we need some professional help from other people, and we're hoping that we could set up a um, uh, subcommittee, and we talked about that, mm -hmm. doing a subcommittee. Um, of how to get some funding. So, so CPA denied that request? Yeah. They did. Huh. Can, okay. Can we add a large article for that? Uh, we could take the place of that CPA article we just pulled and... Uh, <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a number out of her burger. I mean... Well, I'm, I'm just saying, so if we can allocate the money, yeah. then we can go forward with the subcommittee knowing that we can act on that. Because if we form a committee and we don't have any money to explore anything, it's kind of what's the point of having a committee. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, after reading up on CPA with this whole issue, I'm kind of surprised that it, that got denied <laughs> because that is within the definition of... It is within the definition. Yeah. We, we were surprised that it was denied, but they're very careful. Yeah. We give them credit. <laughs> And they have some reservations because mm -hmm. if we don't, as a town or the or a committee, have a have a plan to present, but we don't know what's what, and we don't know all the facts. We don't have all the numbers. We don't know what's possible. Yeah. So the CPA was concerned. Well, okay, if we come up with all these scenarios and everybody votes to demolish the building, are we going to be in trouble for spending eight thousand dollars on something that we just go ahead and demolish? But I think it's about preserving the building yes. we're looking at. It's, one of the options look, is preserving. You should look at it the other way yeah. Yeah. and say, we need to do this to figure out how to preserve the building. Yeah. So we but, came up with a uh, ad or a, a plea for or a, or a description of this committee, um, this subcommittee, that I wanted to just read and just we can discuss it and if we decide that we should go ahead and have the subcommittee, we would post it on the town you know, channel public television and on our Facebook page. And so Dave Tudor and I wrote this up. Yep. So the Municipal Building Committee seeks residents to serve on the Russell School Subcommittee. The subcommittee is charged with research and discussion to prioritize options for the future use of the Russell School Building. The subcommittee will hold monthly meetings with additional meetings scheduled as needed. Interested residents should submit a short letter of interest to the Select Board or Municipal Building Committee. Um, so, it sounds fine to me. Yeah, sounds great. Can we vote to approve that, but not actually form the committee at this point? Because if we're gonna kind of, if we don't have the money to explore any of the options, then it kind of, why even? Well, yeah. Let's discussion? let's. Why don't we do something on the town meeting warrant to yeah. give some? If CPA isn't going to do it right now, maybe if we have a better plan, they'd be willing to do it right. in the future, and or we could reapply again with CPA too. One of the um, critical things we we, have, we discussed at our meeting last night is that we need we want people on this committee to come from um, people who with uh, financial expertise or redevelopment expertise or public private partnerships, not-for-profits, mm -hmm. um, how can um, how can you adaptively reuse a historic structure, and um, we would have focus, some short focus meetings, focus groups, and it would allow us to just to really work uh, contacting Massachusetts Historical Commission, because there are some matching funds that we qualify for because the Russell School is on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's a contributing mm -hmm. building to the district which is just an honor, as you probably know. It doesn't mm -hmm. give you any regulatory, right. but it is, there needs a lot of criteria for some matching funds, which we would, we would qualify for, but we just don't know yet what they are. 
And that's why we wanted to have the subcommittee to right. get and, local experts. And at some us. point, CPA, when I had a couple discussions with a couple of those folks, <coughs> along with the historical grant money matching money, if it's at all possible, some historic uh, being historic, the CPA could possibly get behind funding. Yeah. And if we were looking into rebuilding that, like the old Hadley plan was originally, and turning it into the town hall, would be a great asset to the center of town. It, it's a $2 million corner. It know, is. These buildings are not $50,000 corners here on the corner of Middle Street mm -hmm. 49, I mm -hmm. hate to tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's a two million dollar corner. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Each each one of these four corners is a couple million dollar corner. And it also gives the town uh, to be more fully integrated with the Hadley Historical Commission because right. um, they are our local point people for the Massachusetts Historical Commission. So I would think the subcommittee we would like to invite someone from the Historical Commission to serve on the subcommittee if you're okay with us yeah. having a subcommittee. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. I so think form it and have the <laughs> warrant yeah. article and I mean Yeah, I think the warrant article to get it to get well to give them some funding to have some engineering some and architectural yeah. support and then form the committee I mean, a to lot of it was done, but that's already what eight, ten years ago. Yeah, um, and but Larry Tuttle's DR updated Abram. those numbers, but we, what we need is expertise, expertise to give us an idea of In what directions we can do the partnerships. How do we mm -hmm. do this stuff? So we thought ten thousand dollars is what ideally is what it would cost. You think? Ten. I'm sorry. Ten thousand. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these yeah, guys. we uh, I, yeah, it was ten thousand dollars that uh, we felt uh, <coughs> for Larry's, and he'd be part of the committee uh, mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of these bigger cities that apply for these grants have a lot bigger. Uh, grant funding than 50-50 also. Some of these bigger cities that have rebuilt their old libraries, their old town halls, their old schools. You know, I, I see it all the time on the news. And look pretty great great job. Six guys down there full time I just know. dealing with all the stuff grant, that we need just right grant now. Writers. Yeah. 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 And the, what actually it was just on the news, it was 18 something, their oldest schools that they just renovated. So I'll make a motion to um, add to the special town meeting warrant uh, $10,000 for the on-call architect. Is that what it is? Architect. Second. For, for the Russell School. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it's in the warrant. And then yeah. would we um, have your approval to form a subcommittee before town meeting? Yeah. Because yeah. we would like to post this and say, have them submit... Um, short paragraph of interest to would it be the, to the to our committee or to you probably to us to, to us i think it, it would go to us but maybe we could see you know yeah. forward yeah. them to you guys for yeah. a review type of yeah. thing absolutely yeah once, okay. once we get it we can have a meeting like this and go over them okay mm -hmm. yeah. okay so, make another motion to approve the uh russell school building subcommittee uh, using the announcement or the language that you yeah i'll yeah. email it to christian oh, who do i email it to Please. for to post on hadley media yeah. who, uh, just yeah. drew no jennifer or jennifer yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. me drew for hadley media okay yeah second yes i'll put it all of them all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. thank you awesome. yeah thank you very much yeah that yeah. oh, sounds that's exciting did we finish the dates for uh, to North Abbey Hall? Was that it? Yeah, maybe we should do that. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> okay, before you guys leave, uh, we have our North Hadley Village Hall review of proposals. I don't know if you have seen these, but we will review the proposals for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall, which were due August 27th. Um, we have two bids, uh, one price offered 70000 and one for 50000 or a dollar for a 99-year lease for the ball field, it says. So we can't lease the ball field because that's under Article 97, just the building. So 
I, I haven't had a chance to review these because we just got them, so. Yeah, so we, uh, we Mr. Hieronymus is here in the audience. Okay. He is the apparent high bidder. Uh, we did go out to bid uh, according to law, and we did receive two proposals. You have the results here. The bid was for the building. Um, the bid responses, both of them, are for building and the land. So we're going to have to work through that issue. Um, my purpose of bringing this forward to you tonight is to find out if the apparent high bidder is the price that you were hoping for. If is it acceptable? If it is, then we can do the, the, the fine grain detail that we need to do in order to uh, complete the deal. Um, if it's not, then we need to think about doing something differently. Well, I'll just say from a person's perspective, I think that uh, I would not feel comfortable giving or selling lakefront land for that small of a price. I, I think it would serve the town much better as open space than to and, and incur the cost of demolition rather than giving that land away for such a small amount. But that's just yeah, I just feel like, well, it is a historical building that requires a lot of work to get it up to right. snuff. So, yeah, it's cheap for the land, but if you have to keep, I don't know what the, I haven't had time to review the proposal and understand yeah. <clears throat> what, what, the intent is but i mean if it is something that is within the town's purview and preserving that historical building there is something to that um so if, if i could if sure I propose, sure yeah um the playing field would be maintained as green space the playing field we can't sell yeah. it's under article 97 it's so it just it's town land yeah. Yeah, can't be leased or sold. Has yeah, to stay. that's town property. So the it's just the building. Okay. Yeah. What I believe whatever's tarred is is part of the property line. We still do we have actual uh, surveyor markings there or not? Do we ever have a pen? I think someone did. So yeah, Mr. Eiser did the, the did survey. Did well, wherever they are, which you probably didn't see, <laughs> right? It's been a couple of years now. I think since he's done it. No, I think he just did it for the. Yeah, it was done recently. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we were there, I don't remember seeing it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, the property value, the property value of just a building is two hundred and forty something thousand, I believe. The assessed it was. value. Assessed. assessed yes. value. You know, so as the last time we've had under $100,000 bids, you know, and, and I was really looking for, I, I think $100,000 $100, is a reasonable amount of money for that building, and I, I understand it's a small piece of property, but that, that would seem fair, um, but on the other hand, I hate to see it knocked down, you know, it still has that historical value to a lot of people up mm -hmm. in that area, mm -hmm. so. Tim? The real, the real problem that we're faced is now with that line on the north side being so close to the building, there's the hardly any land yeah. to do, even yeah. park on. And we've, we've basically boxed ourselves in a corner on this. And I think that really needs to be reviewed on, we, we put this out, but how can anybody actually use it properly? Yeah, but town, with, town meeting took that away. Land. Town meeting town took that, meeting away, took that away last week. So, so that's well, I think that a lot of people didn't realize what they were actually voting on. Basically, yeah, they talked about ball field and open space, but there's problems keeping that as open space on the maintenance of it. But then nobody really discussed, okay, if you do that, Here's where the actual line is. No, we didn't know where the line was. And you basically condemned the building to its death. Yeah, and what was the actual vote on town meeting? The wording of it. Yeah. It, it wasn't yeah. directing us to do that. It was allowing us to yeah. make the decision. Right? right? That was my recollection of the, word, the way it was worded. To that petition the legislature. Petition yeah. To be removed from yeah. Article 97. Yeah. I, 
you know, it's a shame we're here again dealing with this filming. Mm -hmm. And I, I too do not want to see these old buildings demolished. demolished if we can save them, if we have somebody that's willing to step up and do the right thing for the building. But I think that we've done ourselves a disservice by not making it con conducive to somebody being able to use it. Joel wanted to say something. Somebody had a comment? Okay, go ahead. I just kind of want to reiterate what Tim said. Uh, I don't want to speak on behalf of Mr. Hieronymus and the bank account, but I mean, for me to do that project was over 1.2 million. But the building's worthless without parking. There's yeah. no bank in the world that's going to give any money to a building with no parking. It's, it's worthless. I think the land is sellable, by the way. My attorney says it is. As far as the ball field, you mean? Pardon? As far as the ball field goes? The ball field, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's the town meeting rejected that. Uh, by a wide margin, so uh, based on uh, I think not proper information. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Yeah, I'd just like to take it under advisement until next week, and then we can make a decision mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, the other thing is yeah. we don't have, unless I missed it. Do we have the actual proposals, or we just have the dollar yeah, figures? Yeah, so we, uh, we we made copies of the proposals this afternoon and gave them. Uh, I think it's in your mailbox. Was oh, it's it? in the mailbox. Oh, it's right here. I don't know. I just got it. Oh. As we walked in. To this notepad. To your notepad there. <laughs> the one that I was asked to do with the, the one with the higher price. This is Mr. Hieronymus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is helpful to know what the <laughs> intended use is. Yeah. Which is what? Hmm? What is the intended use? Uh, it, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Is it okay? Jane just said what the intended use is that's in the proposal. This is public record now, correct? Yes. Yep. So to convert the first floor space to an open space music hall. Um, goal would be to have weekly summer season concerts and events. Um, basically, you know, the village hall idea. And the fire station addition side would remain just a personal workshop of some kind. And then on the second floor would be three apartments. Um, I, I agree with John. I mean, I think maybe we should have time to yeah. I, I think about this. I just like think about it, yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm really inclined to, to vote for the highest uh, bid at this point in time rather than seeing it knocked down and cost us probably more than that to uh, remove it and turn it into green space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just have a question um, about the surveying of the lot lines. So when when town meeting said we want to preserve the ball field under open space, at what point was there a border? Was this, was the border known? The the lot line known of that parcel? Was it a known? No, no. So, would the town have the authority to reassess reassess, reassess the yeah. lot line to give on the north side of the building some, you know, parking? area and but still preserve the majority of the ball field for open space or is that just not allowed or we, would we still have to go to the state have, yeah we'd have to do the same yeah two articles for the, the article 97 okay. issues Yeah, and we'd have to get that right because if we got the yeah. square footage wrong and then yeah. we were 100 square feet on the planning board uh, you know, that would be a shame. So we'd want that right on. Okay, well, let's, uh, you know, thank you for your proposal. Um, we really do appreciate it and wish it was uh, e easier, but it's been a you don't mind issue for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we'll delay it, I guess, till next week.
and we'll have Joyce back, so we'll get her comments on this as well. Oh boy! <laughs> Are you sure you want to make? <laughs> yeah, do you want to make this? Does that change your decision? Now? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, Thank you both for coming. Uh, Kestrel Trust Mount Holyoke Range Project, appointment of volunteers for ad hoc committee. Do we want to make a discussion or just make a motion for the listed members? Uh, is there uh, any reason can, to discuss, sir? The only um, amendment um, would be Steve Stinkwitz, as the president of the Snowmobile Club, who we, when we had the initial discussions we okay. said that we would include oh, no, none of these guys are what's that none, none of these folks are part of the um snowmobile no i know that that's why i said no add, add him okay do you want to be involved along with mm -hmm. the rest of the hunting and fishing problems oh yeah no i remember that i, I yeah. thought maybe one of these folks was representing that group no, no, so no. you're saying they're not represented here Correct. yeah yeah so i'll make a motion to approve the uh, following individuals, we have uh, Mary Thayer, Linda Castronovo, Charlotte uh, Murdishaw, uh, John Michkowski Jr., and Andrew Gnadek, and Steve Simkowitz yep. yeah. as members of the ad hoc committee. Second. Any Mount, further discussion? Mount Hoyle Range Project through Kestrel Trust. Kestrel Trust. Mm -hmm. and, and are you going to be on that committee too, David? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> and, um, just conversations that I've had with uh, the Conservation Commission and Kestrel already. I think this should be a relatively painless process. It seems like the language is pretty inclusive as far as uses go. So I don't think, that, at, at least from my perspective, there's nothing extremely objectionable in there that's going to be a real showstopper. So I think Good. it should be fairly easy. Okay. Yeah, just let me know when we want to either if you guys want to have the committee come in front of the board we'll put it on the agenda and whenever you're ready okay. yeah okay uh was there a motion and a second uh, yes i think, I think uh, so. motion so i have a question that you need to ask your committee uh, since <laughs> we just voted the hopkins academy uh, cross country request for bay road reservoirs how much paperwork are they going to have to go through the boy scouts different organizations to use the Bay Road Reservoirs. Didn't they function. do it already? They, we did this um, last yeah. year. No, I know we did. He's talking in the future, I think, once there's a few restrictions on there. But oh, the problem. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's... These uh, are the issues I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that'll depend on what the final language is on the restriction. Mm -hmm. right? um, or we could just maybe write it in that we the town manages the use similar to how it is right now, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah. <clears throat> Typically, you wouldn't give up your powers and duties over your own property. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded of a, I guess, a motion that was made or a commitment we made when we discussed this originally was that if we passed this at town meeting, that the no trespassing signs would come down at the reservoir. The parking permit requirement would still stay in order to avoid mm -hmm. issues with the out of town yeah. problems. Right. But. Yeah so that people understand there will be access to the land and, and use of the land rather than just a restriction. So. Okay. Yeah. Vote? No, we did a motion. There's a, a motion. Second. second. He's John seconded. Okay. Yeah. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for doing that. Uh, we could do senior center library and fire substation updates. Sure. Uh, Jane, you're here. Do you want to go first? Senior Center update. This building, have you noticed? <laughs> yeah. It's got a roof on it, kind of. Boy, those framers are moving really fast. Um, things are moving along quite well. The, they're working with the library in terms of the original problem you heard with the asbestos removal uh, for, for the water line. Um, the other piece is the um, memo of understanding the select board made with the uh, legion. You want to talk to yeah, I was going to bring that up. We, you know, as we all remember back when we were in the planning process of the project, we uh, had an MOU with the legion uh, to settle some issues with the parking there. And 
as part of that MOU, we were going to uh, pave their parking lot and paint it. Uh, so we didn't have that originally in the scope for the construction. So we've got a change here for doing that work. Uh, it's sixty thousand six hundred ninety-three dollars and three cents to pave that parking lot in accordance with how the rest of the parking lot is being paved so that it's all uniform, there's no cracking, there's nothing else. We had a budget in that MOU of $75,000 for doing this work. So it's you know within the budget and satisfies the MOU. And to be clear, this is grant money we're using, not town. Uh, it, it, we're not, the town's not paying for the work, right? It is. It's offset by the grant. Offset, offset by the grant, grant. yes. Right. Comes out of that bucket. The same place right. yeah. yeah. We're still writing the check, but it's grant. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. So, I'm, I'll just make a motion for sixty thousand six hundred ninety-three cents, or sixty thousand six hundred ninety-three dollars and three cents, to pave the Legion parking lot per our MOU with the Legion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Is that all and their other requests went without a hitch, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other updates there? That we're good, right? Library? Yeah. Um, and then the library, um, I had asked David, so um, there'd been a fair amount of conversation going on with V1 Vodka. Um, Paul's, you know, um, everybody knows Paul owns the church, the old St. John's Church, uh, the town had entered into an agreement in 2014 or 15? Uh, yeah, a long oh, many moons ago. Um, 2015, entered into an agreement um, to allow him access to parking spaces behind that building. And um, so with the construction going on, there hadn't really been a formal provision to deal with that. So. I was going to bring it up tonight. However, David told me just before the meeting that it sounds like some sort of an agreement was reached between the OPM and Paul. OPM and Paul, that there is a place dedicated for his uh, deliveries and he has parking for his employees. Uh, and uh, I'll send the particulars by email around in the morning. Uh, but it seems like this is accommodated as much as the site can possibly um, do under the, the building construction circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other um, big item for discussion is the actual demolition of the building. So last week um, we had hoped, and, and they were still working towards uh, an August 26th demolition start, which would have been Monday, um, but the labor intensive nature of what they're doing has, I think, caught people a little bit unaware. So um, right now, the last report that we got, which was this morning, indicates that they're bringing in the demolition equipment um, on site Friday. It's possible they could start as early as Friday, but more likely we're going to be spilling into next week. So that's the next big... Would well, they run into trouble on the roof? Yeah, that's the roof, the... Like, yeah. Uh, from the yeah. 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 Exciting. I think that's about it, yeah. Um, and, you know, there's no question that it's um, impacting everything. everything, you know, and library operations and all of that, so. Yeah, they're changing their hours in order to uh, avoid uh, being there during active demolition. Right. So. Have, has the library moved their drop box? Um, we moved it once. The last I left off, it was right at the entrance to the driveway. And then I think that may have been a little bit problematic, so I'm not sure if it has moved again. Because the, several seniors have asked if it could be put somewhere where they could get to it. Right. Well, it was moved to the, the very beginning of the driveway, but then I even noticed just anecdotally driving by and sitting at the light a couple of times that you could see people could see the drop box, but they weren't sure if they should pull into the, because it's all dirt for the construction yeah. and the fencing. And then I saw a couple of people like turn around and leave. So I don't know at this point if can we, um, just, can we just let the library or temporary put it over here in town hall? Probably. That would be my suggestion. 
side steps or something so it's outside yeah. where people can get yeah. to. I think right the issue is that getting the sidewalk. You, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that they would have hundreds of pounds of books that then have to be uh, brought quite a back. Few have quite a few people, but yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that there might they be a, a simple way to get it. Yeah, well, just with a cart. I can I can make the offer to the library to, commission. Yeah. Yeah. And any word on their sidewalk? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> oh, on the sidewalk itself? You're uh, talking about the um, the one in front of the good one now. Middle Street. One. The temporary one? Well, no, they they fenced off the sidewalk right now, so because of all the water work yeah, they were I doing. Think they're just about done with that. They shouldn't be opening that up again for the side entrance they're talking about. Yeah. I'm just talking. They lowered the hydrant down, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, they're talking about putting in a. Um, it says it's understanding that a temporary parking surface will be installed for a proper wheelchair accessible parking area for the duration of the project. Oh, okay. So that's the only update on that right now. But nothing about the from the driveway to Route Nine. Nothing about that side. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe if they're paving that area, they're going to do all that paving at one time. And they just have it fenced until they can pave it. Pave it. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, anything else there? And then the uh, fire substation. And uh, I know Joyce isn't here, but I don't know if there are any updates anybody is aware of. Or uh, they, I don't go by there very much. What so. I see that yeah. is um, they are tying in uh, uh, drainage and uh, I believe water lines, but uh, from from the I guess that would be River Drive, and they're doing working on site work. That's all I can see. They've got the for pouring foundation. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, I believe they could do it. there was some questions on a water line today, but they're they're moving ahead with it, I guess. Okay. Human Resources Hiring Ad Hoc can Committee. Go, oh. Can we go back to the senior center yeah. for, about the van, or should I bring that up later? <clears throat> so the van, you've got um, the, the authorized borrowing of eighty thousand dollars for right. the the van. The price of the van was about seventy-five thousand dollars. About a little less than five thousand dollars of surplus borrowing. You're talking about using that. Um, you're talking about using that surplus borrowing in order to create some sort of canopy or enclosure for the van. We checked with the borrowing authority, and they're not happy with that choice. So Linda and I are identifying funds elsewhere in the budget that may be able to be used for that purpose. Okay. Talking like a little canvas or portable no, garage. No, no, it like a carport. Okay. Up, but um, the way it rusted so quickly because it was out in the elements. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a seventy-five thousand dollar yeah. van, four thousand yeah. dollars. We should be able to cover it. And, and mm -hmm. the, um, the planning board has said we can't put any more structures on that site. So the police chief has said he will work with us to keep it at the safety conference. I mean, the fire chief, keep it at the safety conference. Could you get us a price estimate yeah, for we'll that? That'll be very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll, yeah. we'll try to work to make this happen. But Great. the borrowing for the vehicle, it's hard to use the surplus for a structure. But it's a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on wheels. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Um, Thanks, Jane. <coughs> Okay, so I should, uh, well, I'm just going to bring something up. Um, not, well, just um, a couple of people, and I suspect this is a take it under advisement kind of thing, but okay. I just want to make sure everybody knows. I've been approached by a handful of people, um, you know, it's a small number, but still people who are kind of interested in the overall projects that are that are going on who have questioned whether or not the select board has really thought about the fact that the appropriated amount for the senior center was based on a larger scale building and that we then mandated the reduction to the 10,500 square feet, yet the dollars remain the same. Mm -hmm. So people have said, well, so what happens with the extra money? And I said, well, we haven't really talked about the financials. Mm -hmm. So maybe at some point soon, we should have the, the building committees both come in, the, the library and the senior center and the um, substation, 
yeah. and kind of check in and do an update on the yeah, where everybody's we at. We haven't really borrowed the, the, the amounts as needed yet. So, uh, I mean, the rest of the allotted money won't even be borrowed anyway. So well, that's not, yeah. I, I, we, have the we haven't talked about it. Yeah. So that's that's the point I just want to raise. I think that's worth a uh, worthwhile discussion. Yeah. But so, so we've yeah. actually been talking about this behind the scenes. Um, it's the borrowing authorization. If you borrow three million dollars and you only use two point five of it, you have a surplus borrowing authorization of a half million dollars. What do you do with it? Typically what we do at uh, town meeting time is we clean that up. It's the clean up article so that we don't clutter our chart of accounts and have to report to SEC for borrowing that we never intend to use. Another possible option would be once the project is done and we've busted the bottle of champagne across the bow and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> um, we can debt repurpose that excess borrowing for another municipal building project. All right, so DPW or something like that. It will require a town meeting vote, but that's an option. But, but yeah, but it makes sense it would have to go back to town meeting. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's something option. we can all yeah, do. No, yeah. it's nothing more, yeah. I mean, in the past, that's the way it's worked. It's, it's, it was, just wasn't borrowed the full amount. So but I think what you're getting at is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the budget amount or the borrowing authorization and the bids on the library were much tighter than say what the senior center had so if once we're part past the major stumbling blocks with the senior center right reallocate that money maybe as a little bit more of a buffer for the library right until we can get past that tough point in the library as well so that way if we're risking running over just maybe you know on water issues or things like that mm -hmm. that way we have a little bit of a cushion is that kind of what you're getting at or is it Th that's certainly the where folks were coming from okay. yeah right. i mean there's no question so yeah we're, 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 we're not trying to steal from you guys we just want to make sure that yeah yeah let us get out of the ground yes david yeah <clears throat> i think where some of this may have come about is if, like the fire station the library had fixed budgets mm -hmm. they all worked towards it but with the senior center it's unclear what that number was because it was based on a much bigger building at one point, so it was authorized. But if they think that they have that amount of money and it wasn't reduced because of the reduced building, then they can certainly keep spending it. Um, uh, that's not what we're trying to do. Well, I, yeah, I understand yeah. that, but I'm saying that there's yeah. these other projects have been working to this fixed number that mm -hmm. it, it was based on their square footage, what they asked for. Right. So this other number has since changed has it changed back to the town, or is it still available? Right. So. Yeah, town meeting, as David said, town meeting voted to appropriate X million dollars for each of these projects. So but we have not seen any financial information, any progress reports at all as a select board, and that's why I'm saying I think now is probably a good time before we get, you know, yeah. Well, and we, we want to be far enough in so yeah. that you're comfortable as the senior center building committee that you're not running into any major, thing major thing. pitfalls. Right. Yeah, we yeah. already know that the library has run into a couple of those. Yeah. Um, and they were real close on the budget. Yeah, well, that, was, that was much tighter budget. Gave and that, some uh, things because they yeah. had ran over. Yeah. And we're yeah. we're hoping, you know, my explanation has been let's get out of the ground with the senior center mm -hmm. right. make sure we get past you know we still have ACM asbestos containing material right. we right. don't know how big the extents are out there um, you know that's going to be after the demolition of mm -hmm. the hooker school mm -hmm. uh, get that right um, we're going to excavate the ACM out there so we'll know more then what's happening um, right. with the budget point, and we have good track of the budget so point, the library's out of money then we may have to reassess that amount yeah. for the senior center to pay for the asbestos cleanup so when are we going to be out of the ground what's the projections for that well we would would have practically been by now but we ran into that asbestos material when they were putting in the uh the, with the, wa the water right. storm water mm -hmm. sewage line um so I don't know. It depends when we get that done. 
and get to the rest of this. Stormwater overflow. I'm sorry. Yeah, not sewage. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's getting you know, late. It's, it's as everyone has already said many times. It's a tight site. Yeah. Right. And we're working with the library, and their object right now is to get the Hooker School down which means we can't work in that area while they're in the process. So we can't mm -hmm. go forward for three more weeks, probably, Yeah. in terms of that part. But they've got a lot of internal work now that the structure's up. Oh, they're oh, going oh, fast. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the site work that's the problem right now. That's the problem. Yeah. Right, and the site work is the problem because the asphalt plants close November 26th, yeah. mm -hmm. and they want to be paved. Yeah. Right. So then, so that's that's the real stumbling block. And, and the plan was to be done with all this storm, storm water overflow, yeah. piping before the Hooker School was touched. But we ran into the ACM, and that's caused a huge delay. We first discovered it in May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time getting the permits. And then the second permit. And, and then approval. finding a place to put it, and it's, yeah, it's a pro whole process. So how about October? So what is the plan? Are they going October to contain it? Haul it right out? Yeah, yeah. Out of New York. yeah that would Library work. Library Building Committee is going to be meeting prior to that, I'm pretty yeah. sure, too. We, um, yeah, we, we meet on September place 9th. we're taking it in New York then required that we have soil samples yeah. before they accepted it. So we've had that done. We'll have two more meetings prior to that date. Because I just figured that gives the three weeks to get rid of the ACM and mm -hmm. then a buffer, and then we can get everybody in the same room and say, do we want to look at moving funds? Right. Well, and, and the other thing, again, not that, you know, not that anybody out there would be thinking anything along these lines, but maybe it just bears saying out loud, the senior center design is what it is and you're building towards the original design there have not been yeah. modifications or add-ons or extras put in here no marble right. floors no, well, mar no the, marble floors the only no, the only yeah. thing we did was put in the gold-plated roof no yeah. we put on a metal roof instead of the asphalt roof. that was the only change yeah so i get it. i just want to yeah. make sure that's said out loud because i think yeah you know so next time you meet, you're going to be meeting with David Eisenthal and Linda Sanderson to talk about the borrow of the bands, the bond anticipatory notes for the capital project. We can revisit this at that time, and, and David Eisenthal can guide us through what's yeah. possible, what's not possible. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. My arm's still yeah. sore from the last time we met with him. <laughs> <laughs> we won't make you do that again for a while. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. We good with uh, with that? No. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the Human Resources Ad Hoc Committee um, members. We have okay. So we have members for the committee. Will be uh, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, Linda Sanderson, Joan Zuzko, and Mike Mason. The deadlines for the applications is September 6th. That's what we have in here right now. Um, I don't know if there is. Did we not create this committee before? We voted to establish it, but we didn't appoint anybody to be on it. Okay. I make a motion that we appoint the individuals so named. I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you again. And uh, last thing here, town administrator report. All right, we'll keep it No, there were some. Uh, first of all, what I did on summer vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, classification compensation plan study is that project is substantially complete. We received the final report uh, yesterday and I'm going to be reviewing it and we'll, we'll take the whatever final steps on that. Uh, the IT grant, um, we've ordered the equipment that's been delivered and we're developing a training day. Jennifer's been taking the lead on making that. Do you have a date for that? I'm waiting to hear back from Northampton, but they've been in touch with Northeast IT today and I've been working with both of them okay. today. They're doing all the software set up and then we'll have a date for the trainer. Mm -hmm. Moody Bridge, uh, we had uh, applied for a culvert replacement grant uh, and uh, 
we d unfortunately did not receive it. I just mm -hmm. got the rejection letter the other day. Um, the program had $750,000 available for all cities and towns and 61 communities uh, applied requesting over six million dollars. They funded only 14 communities and an average of $53,000 each. Hadley was not one of them, so. Uh, we just talked about all the library, and senior center, and the fire substation, North Hadley Village Hall. Uh, so the adult use marijuana, uh, we were working with a uh, uh, negotiating the host community agreement. Um, I had a chance to look over the, the counter proposal. I've got some questions about that, uh, but I think we're very close to coming to a uh, final conclusion on that. All right, the personnel handbook in, anticip in anticipation of hiring a human resources director, the employee handbook has been updated to reflect uh, changes in practice and law. And that uh, project is now substantially complete. And thanks to David Orteno as well as Linda LaDuke for all of their work on making that happen. Capital assets study that is now underway uh, with site inspections occurring now, occurring now. That'll be a benefit to us in terms of auditing, insurance, and capital planning. Um, MassWorks grant application we applied for $200,000 to repair roadways in the vicinity of the West Street Common. About 44,000 square yards of road surface would be treated there. Um, so we'll find out if we get that. Uh, we renegotiated our, uh, for the municipality, this is different from the residential, we renegotiated the um, electricity aggregation got a very favorable price. Formerly we were working with Hampshire Council of Governments through their Hampshire Power Program. Um, we have been getting a commercial rate of basically ten and a half cents per kilowatt hour. Now that uh, we've clinched 9.1 cents per kilowatt hour through Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative and they have an energy branch. So that'll that will be a benefit to the town. We were projecting a 10% increase in, in um, energy prices. Now we're looking at a 10% decrease in energy prices. And we got our OPEB actuarial update. Um, and we, uh, Linda and I met with Parker Elmore to talk about it. There's a lot of good news about that. I gave you some benefits, um, but um, I, it's, I gave you some summary of the benefits, um, but we're in really good shape with respect to our OPEP. Uh, having met with o, um, Parker Elmore and looking at the most recent actuarial report, um, we thought we might revisit our funding strategy and based upon everything that we have in front of us, I think that our recommendation from Linda and me is that we stay our present find funding course, which means to increase our FOPEP funding by 2.5% um, per year and continue with four or five annual payments into the open trust using dollar cost averaging and to review our investment strategy on an annual basement with our investment advisor. So basically, stay the course. So the Hampshire Council of Governments is in the news again, right? So they never made that larger payment, but they made the payment for to extend employee benefits one month. And it looks like the legislature filed by Joe Comerford's chief of staff, or Joe Comerford, but with her chief of staff, Jared, kind of made it past the first hurdle at the state, but yeah. still not definitive that they'll step in to cover that liability. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, yeah. And, and did Dan carry you all a little bit with it? Or? 
Yeah, yeah I think I think the plan. legislative delegation was behind yeah. it, um, pushing it for sure, supporting. Uh, but it was Joe's chief of staff, Jared. I can't remember his last name, but he was the one who yeah, kind of spearheaded it. Back, so. <clears throat> All right, we talked about the senior services director. Um, uh, we're going out to bid again for uh, we're advertising that position again. Uh, the deadline is September 13th. Human Resources Director, the dead application deadline is September 6th. There's been a lot of interest in that position. And the department heads are supposed to give our SWAT upgrades uh, today. So I've been collecting those and I'll assemble them and send them out to you. Okay. And that's about it. And I went to California. There you go. I've just got okay. one thing real quick. Announcement uh, or? No, or, just a uh, uh, business. Oh, okay. Just go, uh, go for it. The Turk Park. Yep. So I know I've gotten a ton of calls in the last two weeks about it. I know some yep. other members have. Um, we don't have a long-term plan for it at this point, but we do have a contractor coming in this week or Friday. This week, Friday to take care of the overgrown jungle that is the Turk Park at this moment. Um, I was asked why it's in its present condition, and I can say that there was a breakdown somewhere along the line between maybe Zaturka Park, uh, the committee, the DPW, where, where, where DPW director, where, where wherever. Um, I don't think the DPW was even aware that the park was complete was part of the problem. Right. So uh, it was basically left with nobody in control of it. Um, so it's going to be brought back up to where it should be here at the end of the week. And then probably next week, I'm sure we can figure out a long-term solution, whether it's a contractor or the DPW going forward. But at least it'll get rid of the eyesore that it is now. I thought we had brought it up in one meeting that we were, the DPW was going to take it over when the contractor was done with the construction. And the contractor had mowed it two or three times, I believe, and must have been the end of the contract, and nobody was notified. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we brought it up to maintain it. The DPW was going to maintain it. Was that it, before the change in DPW directors? Yeah. It, it yeah. was, but it, it was brought up for yeah, discussion, was, and the question was posed. If I, I haven't remember, found it, I've been kind of looking back. Yeah, because I, I think the question was posed, and Marlo yeah. said, "Yeah, I mean, if yeah. we, if we need to take over the park yeah. portion, we can. Yes. I just need to know." Yeah. Um, so I don't think we ever definitively made the handoff, and then like. David's saying the other side of it is they just kind of finished, walked away, yeah. and nobody talked yeah. to anybody. Well, so. I, that, was, that was it. I mean, they were doing a great job. The contractor was doing a great job right. maintaining it to the end of his contract. And right. But, the, you know, the park and rec commissioners never communicated. Yeah. So. so the, okay. The, the issue is that we don't have the equipment, according to the DPW director, to mow the steep hill. So. Right. Uh, or at least in his opinion, we don't. So we're looking at either an outside contractor or having to acquire a piece of equipment to maintain that hill. So or rent it. Yes. Right. Back to the old DPW director, I thought that's why you bought the zero turn lawnmower to maintain some of these small pieces of property and that particular piece of property when it became, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, Chris yeah. could evaluate, I mean, you could talk to Chris about that to evaluate uh, that. I forgot we had the zero turn. Yeah. yeah, that's why we bought that machine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'd be good. For that deal. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Uh, that, that, that zero turn, fun. zero tumble. No, it, it, it's a real, <laughs> no, it's a real stable machine. All right, you get the mower done. I'm just going to say real. I've got one of the machines. Get a so drone over there, there watching no, John. It, it <laughs> okay. Uh, any other announcements? Anybody have any announcements? other than the uh, open house, so to speak, for the Council on Aging Director tomorrow, 1.30 to 3.30. I don't have anything else off the top of my head. I know I the do. Young Men's Club's got a couple of events. Public records. Executive session minutes for about the fifth time. <laughs> Can we really work on those and get them out? Yeah. It's like a public records in the Young Men's Club? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's that's separate thing. issue. Separate issue, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And then the Young really Men's Club it. has a steak roast on the 13th, and I believe the Fireman's Barbecue is the 20th. I don't know. I don't have it. 
pretty sure. I know there's a sign up in front of the public safety complex, so if you drive by. It's the 20th. You can, 20th? Okay, you can get tickets to well, that. And uh, Hadley Public School started today. UMass move-in started today and goes through the weekend. UMass starts on Tuesday, so expect mm -hmm. a lot of traffic in Hadley yeah. coming up. Summer's over. Yeah. And so <laughs> That's all I have. Okay, so uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good night. John, here we are.